Hi, I'm João Coelho, I'm an undergrad student at UFMG and I'm currently developing a project at the Compilers Lab using the Claim library. In the previous video, I explained what an AST is and how Claim uses it to represent your code. I talk about the AST in this video again, so if you don't know what it is, I suggest you watch the previous video in the series. Today, I will talk about some of the different ways we can use Clang as a library to build our tools. There are multiple interfaces we can use to build our tools. In the official Clang documentation, now in version 12, they describe three, three ways to write our tools. libclang, libtooling, and Clang plugins. Our focus in this course will be Clang plugins, but I'll try to give a brief overview of the others as well. The goal of this overview is not to make you able to write tools in each of these interfaces, it's just so you can have an idea of when to use any one of them. First of all, libclang. The documentation describes it as a stable high-level C interface to Clang. What this means, basically, is that you can expect a program you wrote in a previous version of the library to keep working in future versions. This is in contrast to some of the other interfaces, where changes from one version to the next can be quite drastic and force you to rewrite your tools in order for them to keep working. libclang allows you to traverse the AST using something they call cursors. According to the docs, they allow you to iterate through the AST without needing to learn the details of the Clang AST, but on the downside, you don't get full control over it. libclang does not expose all of the information kept in the AST. The reasoning behind it is quite simple if we remember the goal of libclang. To be stable. The less it exposes the AST in its API, the less it's likely to be affected by changes made to Clang. So, if you need to use the AST more in depth, you might want to consider the other interfaces Clang provides. Next, we come to libtooling. Libtooling's API allows you to take full control over the AST. Libtooling runs front-end actions over code. Front-end actions act as the entry point to our tools. That is, that's where you write the code you want Clang to run for you during compilation. They are implemented as an abstract class in Clang, which other classes implement, such as AST Frontend Action, which allows us to write actions that depend on traversing the Clang AST. When we look into Clang plugins, we'll see that it uses a kind of action called Plugin AST Action, which actually implements AST Frontend Action. That being said, libtooling is not as stable as libclang. Finally, we come to the main topic of this course, Clang plugins. As I have mentioned before, Clang plugins run plugin AST actions over code. This means that Clang plugins are actually a kind of tool you can build using libtooling. We've also seen that plugin AST action implements another class called AST frontend action, which in turn implements frontend action. And then in the next video, we will finally implement our first Clang plugin and then we'll see exactly how to implement these classes. But for now, what's important is to know that when we write Clang plugins, we are writing programs that run plugin AST actions over code. What this means is that Clang will read your code, parse it into an AST, and then give this AST to your plugin AST action class. Clang plugins, being part of libtooling, also give you full control over the Clang AST. There's another neat little thing in Clang, which is the ability to register your plugin. Don't worry about the details, as this will be covered in the next video as well, but basically what this does is allow you to compile your plugin into a shared library and then make Clang run it just by passing an argument at a command line, something like this. Again, we'll see what each piece of this line does in detail in the next video, but basically this line calls Clang and that's it asks it to run a plugin you registered as your plugin over the program in the file example.c. That plugin.so file is the so-called shared library where your plugin has been compiled. Finally, Clang plugins are also not as stable as libclang. So to summarize what we've seen today, libclang is a very stable library that allows you to build some interesting tools that do not depend on having every detail of the AST available. libtooling, while not being as stable as libclang, allows you to access pretty much everything that Clang saves in the AST when parsing your code. And Clang plugins are one way of using libtooling, 
and has some specific features such as the registry and others we'll see in more detail in the next videos. Today we saw some of the options we have if we want to write Plank tools and some of their strengths and weaknesses. In the next class, we will finally start building our first Clank plugin. I'll introduce the bare minimum we need to get a plugin up and running before we jump into more interesting stuff. Until then, you can email me with any questions, suggestions or comments. Thank you.